Today we're going to learn how to solve a trigonometric modeling problem. Um, let's look at the problem and what we'll eventually do is be able to uh, create a graph and then create a function, a sinusoidal function, that will be able to model the data and so we can make predictions. So today uh, what we want to look at here is the problem. A city in Canada has a maximum monthly average temperature of 40 degrees Fahrenheit in July. Its minimum monthly average temperature is negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit in January. And we want to sketch a complete cycle of the sinusoidal function. So first thing we should look at is we should notice that we are given a maximum value of 40 degrees. And it's in July. And we're giving a minimum value of negative 40 degrees in January. So let's label our graph. We'll say January is month one. And then uh, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. And it says there's a, we're going up to a maximum of 40. So let's put 40 degrees over here and negative 40 approximately over here. So let's plot these points. So it says a maximum temperature of 40 degrees in July. That would be at month seven. So there's month seven, and we'll plot that point. And we know there's a minimum temperature of negative 40 degrees in January. That's month one. And that would be approximately over there. And so we now know this is a sinusoidal function, so we're being told that. So we know that this sinusoidal function goes from minimum to a maximum. We know that halfway through it'll intersect the midline, we should probably calculate the midline, although it does look like it's the x-axis, but just in case, the midline or our value of d, so sorry, d is always equal to the max plus the min over 2, and that gives us 40 plus a negative 40 divided by 2. So 40 plus a negative 40 over 2. And we notice that gives us 0. So our midline is at the x-axis. So we also know that um, halfway through the max and min, we should be intersecting the x-axis. So since there's a difference of 6 units between 1 and 7, th uh, th that this halfway through that is at 4. So we're going to be doing something like that. And now we have part of our sinusoidal graph. The other thing that we should realize here, the amplitude, which is uh, 40. We can certainly see that over here. And it goes down to negative 40. If you can't see the amplitude is 40, we can certainly use our formula. The amplitude, which gives us our value of A is simply the max minus the min over 2, which in this case gives us 40 minus a negative 40 over 2, which gives us a value of 40. And that is our value of A. Okay. So we certainly see what our amplitude is. We have our midline. We've sketched it. Now we want to continue sketching this. Uh, if we want to go through one full cycle, we're going to run out of a little bit of room here to do that. But we know that um, since the, uh, from a max to a min gives us a period, a half a period, because we know from max to a min that's always half a cycle, we can certainly calculate the period. If half a period goes from 1 to 7, which is distance of 6, the period must be equal to 2 times 6, or 12. So we know that if we were going to go down back to the midline, it would have to be another distance of 3 units past 7, which would be about there. And that would be at 10. And then if we were going to continue on down, we're not going to quite have enough room here to finish this. But if we're going to continue on down, uh, 
to the minimum point, it would be three units past that, which would be at 12. And that would be a, about there. And actually, we did finish that. Um, so you can certainly see that we, we've just sketched one full cycle of going from minimum point to a minimum point. The period was 12, which breaks it up into increments of, of three each, three, 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 and three. So here's three months, three more months, three more months, and finally three more months. Every time you have a period, you divide it by four. Now will give you the increments in which it will hit a maximum point and then back to the midline, then back to a minimum point, and then back to the midline. So now we have our graph. So let's look at our next question. And our next question says, write the particular equation expressing the average temperature in terms of the month. Well, we already have our A and our D, and we certainly know that um, the general form of these sinusoidal functions are Y equals A, the sine of B times the X minus C plus D, or could be a cosine curve, a, the cosine of B times X minus C plus D. So we have our A and our D. So why don't we look for our um, B. We know what the period is. We've gone through that before. We said that the period was 12. And so we should know that the period, or B, is equal to uh, 2 pi divided by the period. And remember, B tells us the number of cycles in 2 pi radians. Well, we said the period was 12. So we simply divide 2 pi radians by 12. And we get pi over 6 for a value of B. And all of these problems we, make, uh, we do in radians, not degrees. OK, so now we get our B. Now finally, we want to get our C. And C will be different for if we just a sine or a cosine curve. For the sine curve, we look for the point where the graph intersects the midline and is increasing. And if we go to our graph, we certainly see right there is where it intersects the midline and is increasing. So that's where the sine curve would start, and that's at 4. So if this was a sine curve, we would say for the sine, C is equal to 4. If this was a cosine curve, we look for the maximum point and then see where it's decreasing, and the maximum point is right there. And remember, we said that was at 7. So if this was a cosine curve, we would get C equal to 7. So now we're finally ready to write our equations because we've gotten A, we've gotten B, we've gotten C, and we've gotten D. So let's start with the sine curve. We have y equals a, which up above we had said was 40, times the sine of b, which we had said was pi over 6, times x minus c. And c for the sine curve we said was 4, plus d. But we had said d was 0, if you remember, because the midline was on the x-axis. So we don't need to write d. If this is a cosine curve, we would say y equals, once again, the amplitude is the same, cosine, the uh, uh, b, which is our number of cycles in 2 pi radians, stays the same, pi over 6. But now the phase shift is different because for a cosine, we go to the min maximum point, and that was, if you remember, we wrote down that was 7 over. And D is still 0, and there's our answers. So our answers are right here. These are our functions. That model the data that we were given. So now our question is, in what months is the average temperature 0 degrees Fahrenheit? And we should go back and look at our graph. And here it is. So all we need to look for, for when the x value is 0, do you want to know when the average temperature, I'm sorry, the y value is 0, do you want to know when the average temperature is 0 degrees Fahrenheit? And we know that's at our intercepts. So it would be 1 right there, which would be a 4. 
which is equal to April. And the next one would be right over here, which is October. So 10 is equal to October. And by the way, I do see one mistake. This value out here is now 12, it's 13. And we should correct that. So we know that in the months of April and October, the average temperature is zero degrees. So let's have another question. Our next question is, what will the average temperature be in May? Well, May is the fifth month. So we simply have to substitute that into one of our equations. Um, why don't we pick our cosine equation? So we have y equals 40 times the cosine of pi over 6 times x. And x in our case, now we said may. So x is 5 minus 7. And let's simplify that. So that's 40 times the cosine of pi over 6 times negative 2. And that becomes 40 times the, uh, the cosine of negative 2 pi over 6. And we can simplify that just a little bit. So we get 40 the cosine of negative pi over 3, which you can figure out or you can calculate. And it turns out that the cosine of negative pi over 3 is 1 half. So the answer is 20 degrees. So notice this is not anything unusual. What, what we've done here, we simply substituted uh, 5 for x and substituted the equation. So basically found f of 5. And if we want to do it again, we would do the same thing for November. November is the 11th month. And then we would substitute that in and get the answer for that. Now, so now you want to think about what we've done. What we've done is we are uh, given a word problem, which was this one. We were able to, given the data, we were able to model it by finding a function that models the data. And that's what we did down below down here. Then we were able to answer some prediction questions, which is what we did here, where we found what months is the average temperature zero degrees, and what will the average temperature be in May and November. Um, and that is the purpose of, mo of modeling problems. So I hope that is clear. So now it's your turn. What you do is pause this and see if you can solve this problem um, in the same way that we just did the previous one. Good luck, and see you again next time.